I literally just woke up, you can't tell. Uh, I'm sure you can. I, I have these ideas when I first get up. It's like the very second that I regain consciousness, the very second that I wake I just have all these pressing ideas and I'm like, I have to do this. Why haven't I done this? Why haven't I ever, you know? <laughs> and sometimes it's like really dense and deep, but this time it really wasn't that deep. But I thought, you know what? I really do need to, to talk about this. And I get obsessive about those things that I wake up with and it like, has to be like the very first thing that I do because I feel like I'll forget it if I don't do it like right then. It's so random. You know, that it's just, it's just, I, I'm bound to forget it if I don't do it right then. So that's why I'm doing this literally like, I don't know, five minutes after I wake up. Because I know I'll never remember if I don't do it now. So, um, silver. Silver has a lot of misconceptions. Some of them are very quite dumb, I'll be honest. They're really dumb. I mean, for someone to believe that, they would almost have to be either a child or just very, very naive. Uh, but I'm going to go over it anyway, because I think that, you know, there is some truth to some of it. It's just um, definitely not theatrical. <laughs> um, so, in really anything of magic, let alone something as massive and tangible, physically tangible as shapeshifting, really, it goes beyond, way beyond shape-shifting and into any type of magic you may do. I mean, it could just even be visionary work. I mean, silver will affect any magic. Now, most metals, most metals, I'll show you this, this is raw hematite, I don't know if you can see that, but um, most metals actually glorify or empower or um, at least like hematite, allow you to naturally explore your own strengths and, and, and it brings your, your hidden strengths to the surface, right? So most metals will actually uh, help magic in one way or another. Um, but silver neutralizes it. Silver neutralizes good or bad intent. So it doesn't matter whether it's negative or positive. Any magic and again, it doesn't matter whether you're getting a vision or trying to shape shift physically. Any magic at all is neutralized by silver. So even this, and I <clears throat> normally will do a, actually normally will do like a, uh, a netting, but for whatever reason, this one wanted to be wrapped in wire. And so the wire wrapping from a distance may appear silver, but it's not silver, it's aluminum. I make sure that anything that I do, anything that I wear, is never silver, unless, unless, the only time you might want to wear something silver on purpose is if your magic is out of control and you need help, you know, controlling it, and then you can wear the silver, the silver will suppress it as long as you need it to be suppressed, just, to, just enough to get you under control and then you can take it off and the very moment you take it off you're back to being yourself again so silver doesn't the good thing about silver is it is really quite neutral it, it's not going to have any permanent effects unless you like bind it to you it's not gonna have any permanent effects and so the moment you take it off you know that's all you have to do to reverse the suppression um, silver is usually used more as a, an act of protection than it is to suppress. Honestly, if you having trouble controlling your magic, I know firsthand suppression is not the way to do it, um, because that'll entangle and mess up your chakras and all of that. Eventually, if you stay sup too suppressed for too long, suppression is like a band-aid. You need to fix the root of the problem. You know, it, it's it's it, it it's good in a pinch if you really need it. If it's out, that much out of control, it's good in a pinch. Yes, but eventually you're going to have to actually fix the underlying problem that's allowed you to be out of control in the beginning. Okay, 
so silver really if it's used for anything is, is particularly used for warding or protection it's used to create boundaries warding boundaries um, because again it will um, <clears throat> it will basically neutralize you know anything that for example you can bind the silver to a physical boundary of physical warding boundary you can bind the silver to it with magic obviously with a ritual of some sort and anyone who crosses in it will neutralize magic so you could do that for the spirit realm if you've got malicious spirits and you're trying to prevent especially any malicious spirits from coming in you can create a border a barrier with th that silver you'd only need one stone probably it, or maybe you know several stones in each corner um, and you can just you can bind it with magic to create an entire border it's not like you have to like you know how people pour salt around it it's not like you don't have to pour a bunch of silver around everywhere you can just bind it um, and it'll, it'll do the same thing and as long as you set it up the way that it's only at the border then you've got a circle, a literal circle of protection around you, and it's only when something crosses through that circle does it get neutralized. So within the circle, you're still allowed to, your magic is not affected within the circle because it, with the intent that you set it up, only the circle itself, so someone has to cross to it, cross by it to get neutralized by it. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> so really, that's the, that's the best, you know, I'd say for, um, for when, you, when you're trying to shoo away some kind of malicious spirit or something, and something like that, it, you know, silver's pretty good for, um, can be good for just in general warding, trying to ward off <clears throat> some kind of a threat or something, but, you know, even in the physical realm, <clears throat> but does it, you know, um, boil our blood and make us you know weak and vulnerable no no silver just it's not good or bad it just neutralizes it doesn't hurt you it doesn't burn you all this stupid theatrical stuff is is ridiculous <laughs> um you know it's, it's it's almost as ridiculous as the garlic and the vampire story i mean it's just, it's, yeah, I'm sure not many people actually believe it. But I've, I thought, you know, silver does neutralize. It does neutralize magic. And so if you're wearing silver, for example, if you believe in physical shape-shifting, not all of us do, some tribes do. If you're wearing silver, it said that you won't be able to shift when you're wearing that. If, if you are, it's going to be very difficult. Because you're, you're going to be fighting against the silver that's trying to neutralize all of your magic. Um, so, it, it goes past, way past beyond, you know, shifters, werewolves, whatever you want to call them. It, it, like I said, it's, it's every magic that exists, that it affects, that it neutralizes. So, if you've got a child, for example, children are not very good at controlling their magic. If you've got a child, for example, who doesn't know how to control something, then you put silver around the neck, you know, so like, like a pendant or something, temporarily, again, until they learn on their own to control it. You never want to leave it on for so long that you never learn how to control it. You know, you, you never want to have it be that much of a crutch. Um, so it, I don't like silver because um, there's so many other ways to control things. There's so many other ways to neutralize things without neutralizing all magic, good or bad. S silver is, um, the best way I can put it, is it's, um, it, it, it's, it's non-judgmental. I'm trying to f find the, the correct word here. It's, it, it doesn't care whether it's good magic or bad magic. It's non-judgmental. It's it, it it just shuts out everything, and that's why I don't like using it.
um, if I'm going to shut out something, I want to only shut out the negativity. See what I'm saying? I, any kind of good magic I want to keep. So, in my greatest opinion, you should never wear silver. You should never actually physically wear silver. But that's just in my opinion, I guess. If you're really out of control and you need it, then... But I just... I, I, use it for protection purposes, warding, that kind of thing, but I wouldn't wear it. But that's that's my that that's why I made I made extra careful to that, that was made of aluminum when I wrapped when I wire wrapped it. Because I didn't want it to fight against the hematite. So um you know it's not nearly as bad as it's said to be. And it's not nearly as good as it's said to be. Uh, depending on the culture, some people over glorify silver, some people demonize it, and really it's it's totally 100% neutral is, is the word for silver. It neutralizes. I mean, seriously, I said that a million times by now, but I know you're getting tired of it, but you know, it's neither good or bad. You know, it's just, um, yeah, I, I think that's why Abrahamics probably like it so much. Because a long, long time ago, before it got, you know, blown out of proportion <laughs> with, with falsities and stories, a long, long time ago, the Abrahamics saw that it neutralized magic. And when they went to capture witches, they would put silver on them to weaken their magic so that they had less, less, less abilities to fight. That gets into a lot of barbaric truths, actually, in our history, in the witch hunts, and it, it's sad, and it's... That's another reason why I don't like using silver, because it reminds me of my ancestors and what happened to them. Um, you know, there's, there's protection you can do to combat that. There's, there's protection you can do to combat those kinds of things, those tools that you... There's a, there's a sacred ritual and spell that even if someone does something like that to you, it won't affect your magic because you've got a shield of protection around anything affecting your magic. And most pagans, I think, were taught that as children. But as the witch hunts got longer and longer and longer, you had less people to survive to teach it to their children. And, um, you know, that just made it a lot more horrid you know, it's it's like a fish out of water. You know, you don't have a fighting chance, and it's um, just just because of you know, to to um, I guess what I'm trying to say is to um, honor and um, respect my ancestors. I won't wear silver just because of that. That's why a lot of people like Abrahamic hymns and, and phrases and things like that. That's why a lot of people don't like using those because it, it, it goes back to the way their ancestors were treated. It's not, um, you know, any kind of superstition usually. It's just that they're trying to respect their ancestors um, and stay far away from that kind of stuff because that was what was read to you, what was sung to you, what was done to you right before they killed you. So there's a moral aspect as to why we don't like silver, and there's also a magic aspect to it. But like I said, for protection purposes, it can be a wonderful tool. It's not useless, it's, it's, a, it's a sacred metal either way. You just have to make sure that you don't use it in the wrong way.